So we're going to talk about the skeletal anatomy relevant to the cervical medial branches and the cervical facet joint injection. When you talk about the ultrasound guidance for the cervical medial branches or the cervical facet joints, the reason you want to consider skeletal anatomy, that is very important. Why? Because you're looking at the bony silhouette on the ultrasound. The starting point when you use ultrasound guidance for the cervical medial branches is usually mastoid process. So you put the ultrasound on the top of the mastoid process and you look for the sternocleidomastoid muscles which has basically inserted on the mastoid process. Once you have done that, you go about half a centimeter below and the anterior and then you will start to see the first joint which is the C2, C3 joint. This is the first joint that will be visible on the ultrasound because C1 is just a ring and it becomes very difficult to actually identify that C1, C2 joint on the ultrasound in the lateral position. So your first joint will be visible will be C2, C3 joint. At the C2, C3 joint, the structure, the nerve structure that's located superior to the C2, C3 joint is a third occipital nerve. Then you have the peak, which is a C2, C3 joint, and you have a trough, which is where you will have your C3 medial branch. Then you have your C3, C4 joint, which is a peak, and then you have a trough where you have your C4 medial branch. Then at your C4, C5 joint, which is a peak, and then you have C5 medial branch. At the level of C6 and C7, things get different because the location of the medial branch is slightly more quadrat rather than exactly in the middle of the curvature or in the middle of the of the trough so you have to be mindful of that at the c7 level you'll find that the medial branches are slightly situated higher rather than the base of the of the trough so it's actually at the higher level now how would you perform the injection if you want to perform the injection you can do it in two ways you can do it in the longitudinal view with an outer plane technique from anterior to posterior or you can do a transverse view and in-plane technique. Now there are pros of doing the uh, transverse view because you can see the needle tip and you will be able to identify any blood vessels and this is the same technique that you can use to perform radio frequency treatment. So you will do an in-plane technique, you put your needle under ultrasound guidance and then you do an x-ray. I call this as a combined ultrasound fluoroscopy technique or cuff technique. When you talk about the outer plane technique uh, with, the, with the longitudinal approach, you have to be using hydro dissection to make sure you have to chase up your needle tip. Clinical tip here or the pearl I would like to tell is you always will go from anterior to posterior. Why? Because when you go from anterior to posterior, you're avoiding all the important structures including carotid artery, vertebral artery, nerve root and you will be basically bringing the needle from anterior to posterior, landing into that trough. Now, if you miss the bony target, you then still you will be safe because you will be ending in the posterior cervical spinal, um, uh, cervical paraspinal muscles. But if you are doing an outer plane technique and you're trying to head from posterior to anterior, and if you miss the bony target, you will end up either getting into the vertebral artery or the nerve root. So to recap, start with the mastoid process, move down, look for the first joint, which is a C2, C3 joint, look for the third occipital nerve, and then look for the peak and the trough, peak and the trough, peak and the trough. Peak is where you have a facet joint, and trough where you have medial branch located. The uh, injection technique will be outer plane, going from anterior to posterior, or you can do transverse view and you can go in plane from posterior to anterior and landing in the area which is what was the articular pillar and then you will use the x-rays if you're performing the radio frequency treatment to confirm and fine-tune the position of the needle. Thank you. So I'm going to show you how to scan for the cervical facet joint injection and the cervical facet joint medial branch block in patient being in the lateral position. So position lateral try and kind of you know uh, use a pillow to put under the shoulder if the patient has a short neck you want to basically ask the patient to reach out for the knee that way you can try and pull the shoulder down that gives you the maximum operating area
Now, first step would be to feel for the mastoid process and you put ultrasound probe on the top of the mastoid process and I'm going to freeze the image and I'll show you. So mastoid being a bone, it will not allow the ultrasound beam to go through. So that's the mastoid process. Once you have looked at the mastoid process, the next thing you will do is to come down and you'll be looking for the vertebral artery that's actually shown in the on the image there. And then you will move uh, about half a centimeter backwards and once you move half a centimeter backwards you will start to see the first joint that will come into your view and this particular joint is the C2 and C3 joint so that's the C2 C3 joint that's the first joint that's visible and a small bright hypoechoic structure that you see there is the third occipital nerve so that way you could do a third occipital nerve block in that particular area. So we'll go back again and I'll show you the whole cervical medial branch and the facet joint column in one view. And now you can see the whole image quite nicely shown here. And I'm going to freeze this and I'll explain you the peak and trough structures. So here we have the peak and the peak is where you have a joint and then you have a trough. The trough is where you have a medial branch. Then you have another peak, that's the joint, and then you have a trough. So you look for the peak and trough structures that will show you the facet joints are at the peak and medial branches are at the trough. The superficial muscle is the splenius capitis muscle that's, that's covering the, the, the joint uh, on the facet joint column. So we're going to now scan again and I'll show you the needle insertion uh, and the technique of in plane and out of plane and how would you uh, target the joints. So we started again at the mastoid process, come down and move posteriorly. And then the first joint you would see would be the C2, C3 joint. Then you move slightly down and you will start to see the other joint that's your C3, C4 joint coming into the view. And then on you have C4, C5, C5, C6, C6, C7, and then on. And here you have a much better picture of the peaks and troughs in, the, in this image here. You have a peak, trough, peak, trough and this is where you would target your medial branch. Now you could do the injection in an outer plane technique or you can do an injection in plane technique from superior to inferior or capillar to quadrat and I'll show you with the pointer here. So this is the way you would do an in plane technique and this is the way you would do an outer plane technique. When you want to do this injection always remember the clinical pearl or the tip here is to try and do the injection if out of plane, anterior to posterior. The reason to do the anterior posterior injection because you have all the important structures like vertebral artery, cervical nerve root, uh, carotid artery, all are situated anteriorly. So if you try and put the needle from posterior to anterior, you're heading towards all those vital structures. So it's always important to move and put the needle from anterior to posterior. So that's how you would perform cervical medial branches. Now I will also show you the similar peaks and troughs uh, kind of image pattern if you're too anteriorly. And now you can see in this particular image here, that's also a peak and trough picture which we saw for the facet joint column. And this is not where you want to put the needle because we're way too anterior and this is actually the cervical disc along with the cervical vertebra. So this is a vertebral body and that's a disc, that's a disc. So this is basically a picture that you want to see but not to target. So I always recommend you can start to scan anteriorly with, the, with that picture of cervical disc and then you know, okay, we're way too anterior. You can move posteriorly and try and see the cervical transverse process and then you can move posteriorly and this is the structure or the area of interest. This is your cervical facet joint column and the articular pillar. So you can see the peak and stru trough structures here and the needle insertion would be out of plane or in plane from superior to inferior. The local anesthetic and steroid mixture no more than 0.3 to 0.5 cc. Thank you.